What's up you guys, it's Sedona, welcome back to my channel. So uh, quite a few of my friends and some of my followers have been asking me questions about this whole decapitation situation that has happened in Atlanta. Um, and if you haven't heard about it, you should go look it up. It's very um, sad, but interesting case. And so uh, I'm gonna be talking about uh, the, the underlying issue or the underlying problem that caused this this issue, uh, which is a shoulder dystocia. Uh, so if you don't know about that, this video is for you. It's gonna give you a little bit more information on what that is um, and then how we typically treat it in OB. But uh, if you are dealing with any like pregnancy loss or loss in general, uh, this video could be triggering because it does talk about death and um, pregnancy loss. So uh, just giving you that little trigger warning, but uh, otherwise, if you're interested in hearing more about shoulder dystocias and the complications that come from it, this video is for you. So let's get into the video right now. What's up you guys, it's Sidon, welcome back to my channel. So as you know, like I've transitioned into OB, so I've been an OBPA for like, over a year now. Um, yeah, a little over a year now. Uh, so it's it's actually been going great. I, I love OB, it's something that I do. As an OBPA, I do a lot of C-sections um, and I am in on like, like being aware of anything, any complications that may happen because usually complications mean now we have to go emergently to have a surgery. Uh, so there is a case happening right now in Atlanta where there's a couple who unfortunately lost their child um, due to a decapitation is what they said. Um, the baby ultimately had a shoulder dystocia. They said that um, there were, like the obstetrician mismanaged the shoulder dystocia causing a decapitation. They then had to go have a C-section and um, you know they were not aware that a decapitation happened. However, they found out when it was time for the funeral. And so uh, lots of things to unpack here, lots of stuff to talk about, but at the same time, like, you know, like I, I don't know all of the details of everything that happened and, and none of us really do, obviously. And so I'm not trying to pass judgment on anyone or anything like that. I'm just going to give you guys the facts of what a shoulder dystocia is. Um, and then essentially kind of like what we do from an OB standpoint to kind of like combat like or deal with so shoulder dystocias so a shoulder dystocia is a condition that happens when one or both of your baby's shoulders get stuck in um, a vaginal delivery and it's usually stuck on mom's like pubic bone and so like you're delivering the head like i know this looks a little weird but you're delivering the head out of the baby kind of coming this way and then the shoulder gets stuck on the anterior part of mom's pubic bone and because of that, uh, baby gets stuck because you cannot come, like the shoulder is stuck in there, so baby cannot be pulled out. Uh, obviously, uh, this is a medical emergency because there's so many things that can go wrong. I mean, just in general, in birth, <laughs> in pregnancy, there's so many things that co can go wrong, and so it's a miracle when a child is born. However, a shoulder dystocia is a very, very, very important thing to be aware of because it is a medical emergency. Okay, um, when a shoulder dystocia is kind of like suspected or is, is happening, you bring like everybody in the room, your anesthesia, nursing, your providers are in the room because sometimes it may be a midwife that is managing the patient um, and so they'll call in their doc to assist. There are usually maneuvers that can be done, like if, I don't know if anybody's ever heard of a Mick Roberts maneuver, but that's usually the typical go-to maneuver that can be done to try and help release the shoulder now a shoulder dystocia like you cannot predict it right like there's there's no rhyme or reason to it i've seen shoulder dystocias in like little itty bitty teeny weensy babies um i've seen shoulder dystocias in large babies that have like macrosomia because of gestational diabetes um which causes them to grow larger uh than they would have if uh their mom did not have gestational diabetes because they're just feeding on that sugar so shoulder dystocias can happen in large women and small women. Um, it's really about the size of your pelvis and, and how baby's kind of coming through the canal. And there's really no way of predicting it. Obviously, if the patient may have like GDM or like, like which is uh, like 
gestational diabetes, um, then you know you're on higher alert because the the thought is that their baby will obviously be larger, and then the risk of shoulder dystocia is higher. I know it's not uh, like fetal macrosomia is not. Um, it's not like an indication for like a schedule C section. However, I know like more and more providers are kind of like pushing that because they don't want these complications that can happen if you trial a vaginal delivery and then you end up with a, a shoulder dystocia, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, a shoulder dystocia can cause problems not only for baby, but also for mom. Um, you can have like pubic symphysis diastasis where the the area in your pubic bone widens more than it should. You can have like paralysis of your like sciatic nerve or a perineal nerve, like the nerves in your legs in general, which then causes you to have some paralysis in um, that leg that that nerve was um, was essentially kind of like compressed on. And so those things can happen in mom, but when it comes to baby, if you like, just think about it, the neck is being stretched and the shoulder is being stretched, but pulled, you can have like all the nerves here, which is like your brachial plexus. So if you know um, your anatomy, like nerves run from in your neck, like down into your shoulder and there's like your brachial plexus right there, which innervates lots of nerves in your arms and then some nerves like that go down into your thorax then baby can have like a brachial plexus palsy where their their arm they're not able to move that arm or, or kind of like do any maneuvers with that arm because of that paralysis of that that brachial plexus and it can be transient um, but it can be something that lasts a little bit longer and baby's gonna have to have um, lots of physical therapy as they continue to grow obviously you can have like a clavicle fracture you can um, have compression of the umbilical cord in baby which can then cause asphyxiation of baby so lots of things that can go on and then you know i've seen some cases where it talks about like the decapitation um, obviously i've never seen that in my practice but i have seen that there are some cases where it says that due to a shoulder dystocia, um, they heard a pop and um, you know they had to have a C-section emergently and uh, baby's head was delivered uh, via C-section um, along with body. And so like these are things that are very, very traumatic in, in nature. And obviously I wanna be very mindful of that, but I don't want you all to be like afraid or scared of what can happen with a vaginal delivery and then that, that you're more so pushing towards a c-section because there are so many complications um that can happen from c-sections for both baby and mom as well um you know with infection and things like that and so just want you guys to have all of the information especially my new moms out there like or new moms to be because i know like i was super nervous and scared um when I was gonna have a vaginal delivery because I was like, man, like I'm about to push a whole baby, a whole human being out of my vagina. Like this is crazy. Um, and it is crazy, but it is doable. Uh, but you guys need to be well aware of all of the complications that can happen in your vaginal delivery, in pregnancy, in your delivery in general. Um, and you need to be able to advocate for yourselves. Know that you as a patient have a voice. And obviously like, you know, you wanna be heard, but if you don't feel like you're being heard, make sure that you have somebody in there that can also advocate for you. Because that is very important that you're kind of in like a calm Zen space and you feel heard when you are in labor because uh, that can also affect not only you, but your unborn child, okay? So hopefully this was some like good information for you. Um, you guys can always like just Google shoulder dystocia if you have access to up to date, definitely go to that. Um, but I want you all to be aware of everything. Definitely keep uh, that family in prayer because it is a traumatic situation. Anybody else that has dealt with any type of pregnancy loss. All right, if you have any other questions for me, leave them in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram at Don PA and on Instagram at Get That C University. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will talk to you guys next time.